Hello, this is Professor Sanyal. In this video, I'm going to show how to create association rules using RapidMiner Studio. The data set that I'm going to use for this purpose is called Charles Book Club. Let me show you the, how this data set looks. So this data set is from a book club where people can borrow different types of books. And the different types of books that people have borrowed are the columns, that is children's books, youth books, cookbooks, do-it-yourself books, and so on. And the data set has information on 4,000 such transactions, as you can see here. And what these rows suggest is that a person for example, this row 16, it says that a person borrowed a children's book, cookbook, reference book, and art books and geography books together. The se se row 17 says that this person borrowed children's books, youth books, cookbooks, and art books uh, together. So the goal of building these association rules will be to figure out what types of books people frequently borrow together. That is, when people borrowed, let's say, children's books, what other types of books did they also borrow? That would be the goal of this um, our model. So let's go to the design and put Charles Book Club dataset over here. As you saw in the dataset, the information is in numeric format, that is ones and zeros. If a person borrowed a certain type of book, it is one, and if a person did not borrow a certain type of book, it is zero. But RapidMiner prefers the information to be in nominal format, so we'll need to convert the numeric information into nominal by using the numeric to binomial operator. So we linked it here. The next operator that we are going to use is called FP growth. So this operator is going to find out the items that are most frequent. And we can set some thresholds over in the parameters. So you can see one of the important parameters to set that threshold is called support. So by default, the support is set at 0.95, which is pretty high for our data set. So I'm going to set it at 1. Now, if you don't know what support means, what it means is what percentage of our data set has the certain um, uh, um, item. So we, by setting the support to 0.1, we are telling RapidMiner that show us all items that occurs at least in 10% of the transactions. So it's going to show us all the items uh, and sets of items, which are called item sets, that occur in the data set at least in 10% out of the 4,000 uh, transactions in the data set. So the next uh, operator that I'm going to use is called association rules, which is going to create the association rules. So this, as the name suggests, it's called create association rules. So I'm going to put this frequent uh, item set output into the create association rule. So if you take your cursor here, you'll see that this generates the frequent item sets, which we put to the create association rule input port, which is the association rules uh, item set, where it is expecting the frequent item sets. Now for the output, I'm going to put both of these in the result. The rules, these will be the association rules. And the second one, which will be the frequent item set. So I'm going to put both of these in the output. Now, for the create association rule, again, you see that we can set some minimum thresholds. So if we do not set these minimum thresholds, um, what will happen is we are going to be, if we set these thresholds too low, then we are going to be overwhelmed with many, many items. And if we set these very high, then we may not get many different item sets. So there is no, a uh, perfect way to set this, but we can try different numbers and see if we get too many, then we can raise the threshold. If we get too few, then we can lower the threshold. So confidence, we can set the minimum to 0.8 or we can set 
the lift. So I like setting the lift to one because if the lift of a certain rule is not above one, then it's probably not going to be very meaningful. So the lift is, I am setting it to one. So let's run this process. Okay, so here are the frequent item sets that we have got. What it says is that um, cookbooks has a support of 40, about 41 and a half percent, which means that 41% of the transactions had cookbooks. 39.4% of the transactions has ch had children's books. And so these are the all the single items. And then we have also multiple items like cookbooks and children's books together occur in 24% of the transactions. Cookbooks and geography books occur together in 15.6% of the transactions and so on. So on the left, you can see that there are 104 such sets that have been um, shown by RapidMiner. And the minimum size is one, as you can see at the top, that is, there's only one item. And there are, if we go all the way to the bottom, we'll see that there are also item sets with five items. That is cookbooks, for example, this row says cookbooks, children books, geography books, do-it-yourself books, art books, all these five items occur together in about two, two point two and a half percent of the total number of transactions. Now, if we want to focus our attention, suppose we want to focus our attention only on item sets of three items, then we can set this to three, and maybe we can set the max size also to three, and then say update view. And now we can focus our attention only on item sets that have three items. So cookbooks, children books, and geography books occur in 11% of the items, and so on. Now let's go to the association rules. So here we see the association rules. Now let me explain what this means. In RapidMiner, the premises are the if, or rather the if state are called premises and then are called the conclusion. So how to read this is if people borrow do-it-yourself books, they also borrow children's books, geography books, and reference books. And here is the support, confidence, lift, etc. Now support means that do-it-yourself books, children's books, geography books, reference books, all these four items occur together in three and a half percent of the uh, transactions. Confidence of 13.7 percent means that if do-it-yourself books, if someone has uh, someone has borrowed do-it-yourself books, then we can say with 13.7% confidence that they also borrowed children's books, geography books, and reference books. So the others, let's look at the second row, which is cookbooks. If people borrowed cookbooks and geography books, they also borrowed do-it-yourself books, youth books, and reference books. For that, the support is 2.1% and the confidence is 13.8%, which means that if we know that someone has borrowed cookbooks and geography books, we can say with 13.8% confidence that they also borrowed do-it-yourself books, youth books, and reference books. And the lift is, so, Lift is something I also look at along with support, confidence, and support and confidence. So we can move lift next to the confidence. So uh, the higher the lift, the better. So confidence, the raw confidence has some limitations. And but the lift actually shows that is what is the confidence with respect to a benchmark confidence. So the higher the lift, a lift of one means that the confidence is what we would expect. That is the same as benchmark confidence. But anything above one, like 2.3 and 3.0, it shows that this is above benchmark confidence and therefore this is good, that this is really a good rule. Uh, and we can sort based on lift. So for example, we can sort based on the higher lift. So this has the highest lift that is 
youth books and reference books when people buy borrow together they also borrow cookbooks geography books and do-it-yourself books which has a high confidence of 26 and a half percent and a high lift of 3.4 and in some case you know rapid minor call these premises and conclusions but you may have also um, studied them as uh, antecedents and consequence that is premises are antecedents and the conclusions are the consequence and on the left we can also filter so for example suppose we want to focus on only cookbooks and uh, children's books or rather let's say we want to focus only on children's books so we can select children's books and now we show it shows only the children's books or we can we we may also want to focus on children's books and geography books then it shows all the conclusions or only the conclusions that includes children's books and geography books as you can see now for uh, uh, or for an organization the association rules looking at these association rules and understanding these association rules is important because then they know that okay if they want to encourage people to uh, borrow children's books or geography books they can focus on the people who borrow do-it-yourself books because they are very likely to also borrow children's books geography books and reference books so that's how you we uh, create association rules and evaluate and interpret association rules in rapid minor thank you so much for your attention